Hi there and welcome to A-Level Biology with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to be going through gas exchange in plants and I'll go through it at A-Level standard however there is a lot of overlap with GCSE. If you are new here then click subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. So the first thing you need to be aware of is the structure of the leaf of a dicotyledonous leaf and this is the same in GCSE as it is for A-Level. So I've got a diagram here compared to an image from under the microscope, so you can see the difference. And you need to know these three key layers for gas exchange. So on the lower side of the leaf is where you find most stomata. And stomata is the plural, stoma is singular, and a stoma is the gap. And it's the gap that is formed by these two guard cells. So we have two guard cells and those will create a hole or a pore, and that is what the stoma is. And if you're talking about multiple, that is stomata. Now that is the exact site of gas exchange. And the gases, as carbon dioxide diffuses in, it will go into the spongy mesophyll where you can see there's lots of space. And that is space for the gases to diffuse in, um, and it helps to maintain the concentration gradient because as the carbon dioxide diffuses into this space, can then diffuse up to the next layer, the palisade mesophyll, which is where most photosynthesis occurs because it's closer to the top surface and therefore will receive more direct sunlight. So those are the three structures. You can actually also see the vascular bundle and that is where the xylem and phloem occur to transport the water and dissolved mineral ions in the xylem and the sucrose in the phloem. And if we have a look at the micrograph, we can see here is our vascular bundle where the xylem and phloem tissue is. You can clearly see here as well lots of gaps between the cells. So that whole layer, which they've labelled E, is the spongy mesophyll. The palisade mesophyll, you have much narrower, longer, oblong shaped cells, and that's so you can pack lots of those cells in, containing lots of chloroplasts and therefore chlorophyll to maximize the light absorption for photosynthesis. In particular, the light dependent reaction, which I'll link up here so you can have a look at. The stomata is a bit harder to see it on this image, but as I said, they're mainly on the lower side and you can see one here, it appears a bit darker, We've got another one here and another one just there. So stomata are the holes, the guard cells are the cells which create that pore. So gas exchange occurs at the stomata and it's actually oxygen that diffuses out and carbon dioxide diffuses in. And that's because carbon dioxide is required for photosynthesis and therefore it's constantly being used by the cells within the leaf, particularly in the palisade mesophyll. And that maintains this concentration gradient that you'll have a lower concentration in the spongy mesophyll compared to the atmosphere. And that's why carbon dioxide diffuses in. Now oxygen is a useful gas. It will be used within the plant for respiration. However, because oxygen is also a product of photosynthesis, there will be high concentrations of oxygen within that spongy mesophyll compared to the atmosphere. And that's why oxygen will diffuse out of the stomata. Now there is this compromise, this balance between having the stomata open to get carbon dioxide diffusing in for photosynthesis and reducing the amount of water that will be evaporating out of that open pore. So for that reason, photosynthesis mainly occurs in the daytime when there's light. And therefore at nighttime, there's not an advantage of having the stoma open. So the stomata actually close at night as the guard cells become less bent. There are other ways to reduce water loss as well. And plants in particular like xerophytes really do have to battle this compromise of requiring the carbon dioxide for photosynthesis but not losing that essential water by evaporation. So xerophytic plants are plants that can survive really harsh conditions which are a lack of water 
and they have lots of structural features to enable them to still be able to exchange gases through their stomata whilst also limiting water loss. So we're going to have a look at some of those. I've just shown you down here the micrograph of a cross section through the leaf of marron grass and this is what marron grass looks like. So you find it at sand dunes and the reason why there's not very much water here is um, the sand is really porous so it drains away but also it's very very salty because it's near the sea. So let's have a look at some of these adaptations. The first thing you might notice is the leaf is actually curled up. And the reason that's an advantage is any water that does evaporate tends to get trapped in this area. And therefore it becomes very, very humid and it reduces that water potential gradient from the inside of the plant to the outside. And that should reduce any further evaporation. Second adaptation is all of these pink hair-like structures that you can see sticking out all spiky. And what they do is trap the water that is being evaporated out from the leaf. And again, because it's another way of trapping that moisture in the air, it makes it really, really humid to reduce the water potential gradient and therefore less evaporation or transpiration. Next feature we have is the fact that the stomata are actually sunken in. So you can see we've got lots of folds here and within each fold there's a stomata sunken in deeper than you would have on other plants. And it's exactly the same reason why. It helps to trap moisture, more humid, less evaporation. Now there are other features and you can't see all of them on this particular image uh, but they'll also have a thicker cuticle and that is to again prevent evaporation and they'll have a longer network of roots so that it can reach water at further distances. So that is it for gas exchange in plants. Hey, you found it helpful. If you have, please give this video a thumbs up.